President of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, CEO of the College, Dean of the College, President of the Biological Society, President of the Student Union, Members of Council, Guests of Honour, Susan Dennehy, and with us lecturer, Dr. Zappone, Members of Faculty, Students of the College, Ladies and Gentlemen. To succeed, we all need a concept or a philosophy that we believe in, something that motivates us, uh, something that inspires us. And the Biological Society in RCSI is an extraordinary source of inspiration. And ladies and gentlemen, tonight we can experience the omnipresent history in RCSI at the many inspirational figures who led this society and use their example as a source of motivation for all of us affiliated with the college. So let's look at who Wittes is. So he was the co-founder of the Biological Society with a Dr. J. Lewis, and he became president in 1941. He graduated in 1931 and got his BA from TCD in 1932, was then appointed by a lecturer in biology here in North CSI in 1938 and became the professor of biology in 1960. So what was he like as a lecturer? Well, I found this piece uh, on Wittes. It said here, he wasn't a stimulating lecturer in biology. And one suspects that he did not believe in didactic lectures, whereas his demonstrations on the subjects were interesting and memorable. Two students, attempting once to enliven the evening biology lecture, slipped down a small trapdoor in the back row of the theatre and, creeping under the floorboards, interrupted Wittes's dissertation of Silorinus with windy sounds and knocks to the intense amusement of their colleagues. Wittes, aware that conditions beneath the floor of the theatre were tolerable for only a short time, moved to the back of the theatre where, in sight of the trap door, he delivered in lugubrious tones one of the longest lectures on record <laughs> and inflicted a truly miserable punishment on the pair of miscreants. Good for you, Professor Wittes. So the, what's interesting about Wittes, though, and I think the reason why he was interested in the Biological Society, he was a historian. And he was the, the number one medical historian in this country. Three books, 1949, the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland and its medical school, 1963, A History of the Royal College of Physicians in Ireland, 1654 to 1963, and in 1972, the Richmond, Whitworth, and Hardwick Hospitals, St. Lawrence's, Dublin, 1772 to 1972. Here are some pictures from the past. I always love these pictures when you look at these people, uh, just like our, this, ourselves this evening, coming to an evening uh, look at the, the style and the fresh faces. This is 1935. Uh, moving on to 1961, lighting up a cigar at the, the start of an evening uh, here with the Lord Mayor of Dublin, Ben Briscoe, with Harold Brown here, of course, the famous Harold Brown. In, in the, uh, fortunately, I was taught by him. many of my colleagues uh, at the very back row where they always sat when we were in medical school. Uh, <laughs> We are also taught uh, by Harold Brown. He used to tell us about the early days of vascular surgery. He used to tell us about rheumatic fever and mitral valve stenosis. And we'd be absolutely engrossed and just an incredible teacher. Moving on here, 1973, and we can see Max Ryan. Again, very fortunate we were taught, uh, so many of us here were taught by Max Ryan, professor of radiology. And we can see here Dr. Patrick Boffin, Professor Patrick Boffin, Dr. Harry O'Flanagan, and Miss M. Archer. Willis, Willis ultimately was a carryman, and ultimately he died in 1982 in uh, Sny, County Kerry. So his memory very much lives on. Uh, and as president, and this is my second year as president, and my last year as president, um, you get the honour to choose the theme of the evening. So I'm a, an ENT surgeon, and I specialise in cancer of the head, neck, and skull base. So last year we talked about head, neck, cancer. And we had an incredible Wittes lecture from Mr. Barry O'Sullivan, uh, who gave us uh, his insights into microvascular reconstruction of the head and neck. This year, so I've, I've chosen a topic that uh, is very close to my heart. This is my, my wife, uh, Katrina, uh, and our daughter, Ellie, uh, who has special needs, and she's non-specific global developmental delay. And I sat uh, in the kitchen listening to Susan Dennehy's documentary uh, earlier last year uh, on the autistic spectrum. And after it, I just wanted to contact her just to say what incredible work it was. Uh, and then th started thinking, well, why, why don't we actually plan an evening around this? And of course, then Dr. Zappone uh, was the next person I thought about. Ellie was born in New York in 2011. Uh, those dreaded milestones came and went. 
uh, and we began to realise that there were issues. And ultimately in Dublin we were told that she had a number of issues and uh, unfortunately is non-verbal. But uh, really at the time we were, we were shocked. We were, you know, where do we go from here? What's going to happen to this little girl? What are the services that are out there? Uh, and indeed I thought to myself, how can I fix her? Uh, I was told you should contact Enable Ireland and after being a doctor for you know, over a decade at that stage, my first question was, who are they, to my shame? Uh, I realised I knew nothing about disability, absolutely nothing. That's the reason why I think it's so important that there are medical students here this evening, um, because it's important that you do have an insight in disability, in particular given the multicultural um, atmosphere and, and presence that we have in this uh, medical school. So we've been on something of a roller coaster ride uh, so, since then. We've met some amazing people. Ellie's now in Abacus uh, School in Tala. Absolutely incredible teachers, incredible special needs assistants. Um, I received about 25 emails in the last two days, just wishing good luck for tonight. And included in those was um, Anthea Seeger, who's doing a master's now here in North CSI, and she was Ellie's first physiotherapist. Um, also, Claire Trotter, Trotter, who was also Ellie's first physiotherapist in Tala. So people who, they, they got on to me just to say, we saw the pictures of Ellie and we're just delighted she looks well and she's, she's happy. So it's incredible, you meet people like that. Uh, but you also come across some very frustrating moments. Um, and you know, in cancer we talk about evidence-based medicine. We talk about if you present to me with thyroid cancer, you'll get the treatment you'd get in Sloan Kettering in New York, you get the treatment you'd get in MD Anderson. Yes, there are problems, but that's our bar. And we've got to make sure that our bar for children with special needs, whatever their disability, matches international norms. And we're not there. We're a long way from there. And that's what we need to be, because that's what these children deserve. That they're not second place, they're not a silver medal, they're our children, and they deserve the very best. So these children are a significant minority in society who require government to ensure facilities, programs, support structures that are there so they can match their potential, whatever that potential may be. Now fortunately, there are many people here in the audience tonight that have dedicated their lives to children with special needs and to, to children overall. Uh, people in medicine, people in politics, people in journalism, people in nursing, physiotherapy. And tonight we have two very strong advocates for children. 